Yeah, our first guest in the studio. Yeah. Yay. Wait, <laughs> Can we keep drinking? Guys, I'm drunk. Alicia! <laughs> Ramble. Pretty Basic. Thank you, PayPal and Canva, for sponsoring this episode of Pretty Basic. Hey guys, what's up? And welcome back to Pretty Basic. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Welcome to our studio. Today we have our very first ever in-person guest. Hi guys, it's Daisy Marquez. I'm so excited to be here in the studio. It's so freaking beautiful. Thank you. Thank you guys you. did that. <laughs> You're bringing your calming Libra energy right now. Yeah. Very chill, very relaxed. Daisy's also my favorite name. My dog is named Daisy. I know that. <gasps> Do you really? <laughs> I saw her on your phone. You guys kind of look alike. So beautiful. Big brown eyes. Yes, big youthful glowing. Thank well, thank you. you for being here today. Thank you for having me. We are so excited to have you in the studio with us. Guys, if you are not following Daisy, you definitely need to. She has been on the platform for so long. Mm -hmm. So talented at makeup. I'm not going to lie. When I was doing my makeup this morning, I was like, I got to make it look good. <laughs> I was like, I need to make it look good. Daisy, this is going to be so good. She's so good at makeup. Thank you. Well, we actually have some questions that we usually ask our guests, mm -hmm. if that's fine. What was so your seamless. first impression of, <laughs> about us? I was going to say, when I first, I think I've seen you guys at other events, right? What was the last? It was the People's... Oh yes. my god. Yes. Oh my god, I forgot about that. Yeah. That's right. We were very drunk. Yeah, we got very drunk. <laughs> that was That's fun though. Right. That was fun. Yes, that was the last time I saw you guys. Oh my god. And it was our first time hanging out and I was like, wow, they're so nice, very welcoming. Oh my god. That's why I felt very comfortable. Like just coming in here. I, I was very that. nervous at first, but I was like, they're just themselves. So I was like, let me just be myself. You're so sweet. Calm. And this is your first podcast ever, correct? First podcast ever. <gasps> first of many, I'm sure. Yes. yes. Well, you're killing it. You're doing so much. Our next one, what's your go-to drink? <gasps> espresso martini. I am an espresso martini girl. Really? Do you do you guys like espresso martini? No, but martini? I thought you were going to plug your I know. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> we can redo it. We can redo it. We can redo it. Or we can keep I it. I was here thinking about espresso martini. <laughs> Let me just read. We'll read. We'll okay, okay. From the top. Okay, a question we ask all of our guests is, "What's your go-to drink?" My go-to drink. It is right in front of you, Lee. <gasps> oh my gosh! Oh my so god! It just genius. appeared. What? So, I came out with a bear wine by Daisy Marquez. It's this cute little can, but she is a little dangerous. This is fourteen point two percent alcohol. That's that is unheard of. I for real I've never seen I've, this before in my life no. either but you know what I was so happy because usually when you drink like white claws and stuff you mm -hmm. have to drink a bunch of them to feel it and you yes, get bloated and, you get full. and us ladies don't want to be bloated on a night out we want to look snatched yeah. so <laughs> these are perfect oh my gosh yes. How, I mean I love the design of this I feel like it's so minimal did you come up with the the single line sketch yeah so the aesthetic at first it was like completely different but my team knows i'm very indecisive and random they'll be like hey never mind put it on hold and so <laughs> i was just brainstorming and i was like you know what i want to do a silhouette let's name it bear very intimate i love that feel confident and sexy drinking this with your friends and you know wine drunk is very different I than love like a wine i drunk. love a wine I love drunk a good wine drunk yeah. oh my gosh how long was this in the works can we try it can we open it yeah, i know i want to get the ASMR. Oh, you might have to open mine Oh, I got it. Ooh, it smells so good. Pinky's <laughs> like, up. Pinky's up. Wait, cheers. cheers. Oh, cheers. 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 <laughs> Oh, wow. That's dangerous. That's that is so, so good. good. It has taste notes of jasmine Ooh. and peach. <gasps> My favorite. Yeah. I, I like the can. I really do. I feel like it keeps it cold. It's just tiny and cute. And yes, it's better chilled. Comes in a pack of um, wow. white and rose. You can get the variety pack. I remember when you dropped Please it, do. it did really, like, really well right off the bat. Didn't yeah. it like, sell out and, like yeah. quickly? Uh -huh. That's amazing. Um, right now, we're out of the rose. At first, the white one went fast because of the alcohol percentage. Yeah. But this time, we pushed the rose a little bit more and the rose is very popular right now. So oh, especially out. for summer, like something, you know, yeah. totally. How long was this, this in the works? I feel like not many, especially female influencers have come out with alcohol. I'm gonna yeah. get drunk right now. I'm like, I was like, I'm, 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 I'm literally- Do we have more chilling? <laughs> Once I start drinking this, it's very hard for me to put it down because most people, oh my God, my friends chugged it one time and I was like, oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh, no. But okay. it took like, at least like half a year, right? Yeah, it took like half a year okay. to make. But right off the bat, I was like, it was kind of a very fast process because they, the team was very good at like with the samples and stuff. Yeah. So, Probably what took the most was like the the whole concept and aesthetic of it. Yeah. Oh mm -hmm. my god. Even just nailing. It's so funny because 
as a wine lover myself, I really do love wine. I could not tell you what's good or not. When I'm in the aisle, I'm Me so too. overwhelmed and I just pick what's cute. And that's so embarrassing, but like, that's how it is. And I feel like this is something I would grab just being like, oh, let me try this. Like genuinely. And they're so aesthetically pleasing. I just like having them in my fridge. People open them and they're like, what is that? And yeah. Like, and they're definitely small, but like, this is great. I didn't eat enough today and I'm feeling this already. I'm not even kidding. I I'm just like smiling to myself. I'm not <laughs> even laughing. Like, like, why are you laughing? I'm going to turn red. <laughs> I made oh sure my gosh. to eat bread before coming. Oh, for oh sure. Oh my gosh. Well, this is so tissue. exciting. I literally feel like, so how was the tasting process? Like when we did our makeup palette, you know, we were swatching. Yeah. How was it? tasting your well, wine it was fun to i was gonna say you yeah. have to stop after some point because you're like i'm not yeah. gonna make a good decision yes, for right sure. now like everything just starts tasting great like you just yeah. like black out and you're but it's research yeah yeah it was I, I was like drunk q a and i had to refilm it because i got way too drunk by the end and i was like okay let me just slow it down this we've time. dealt with that too before yes, yeah have too. less is more yeah <laughs> <laughs> this is really good Thank i you, know ladies. i actually really like it can i keep drinking mm -hmm. is this a bad idea can we keep drinking mm -hmm. Have you ever shotgunned it before? No, but do you want to? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> no, like, are you I mean, asking? I've never shotgunned anything. I've in never shotgunned <gasps> anything either. I was always so embarrassed to admit that. Yeah, I'm but finally... did any of us go to college? No. no. That's why. <laughs> That's why. I'm like, no, we did not. <laughs> I went to community college. <laughs> oh, really? That's I did. It. For how many years? Two years. Okay. Yeah. Did you get your AA? I'm two. slurring already. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> well, I couldn't go to college, so. So, Remy and I have, mm -hmm. you know, we've played with the idea. What if we were to come out with, like, a pretty basic alcohol one day? You know, we've said <gasps> that on the podcast. Uh -huh. Like, that'd be so fun. But it's so overwhelming because there's so much that goes into it. It's such a male-dominated industry. Like, how was it you even wanting to, like, pursue that? Honestly, it was the idea kind of just came during quarantine. Mm. I was like, mm, I can't drink alcohol every single day. So I was like, let me just drink, you know. Well, the sugar. Yes. And I was like, let me just drink wine, like just casually, like whenever I want to, just kind of sip on it. And I became a big fan of wine and mm -hmm. I wasn't a big fan of wine. And then Evigal actually was like, do you want to come out with your own? And I was like, oh, of course I do. The stars aligned. And, you know, it was something that I have never done before. I'm, you know, I'm really good at marketing makeup and advertising it, but I was like, okay, this is a whole new field. But I was very excited, one, because I was very passionate about it. Mm -hmm. And two, I was like, I need to somehow really market this. And just my fans already know how much I love wine. So I was like, let me make it just like a me type of wine. So I feel like with the aesthetic and everything and the way that I was able to do like my own little campaigns, I was really able to just market it. And, you know, I've had a lot of guy friends also try it and they love it. They gunshot it all the time. <laughs> That's what they're not supposed to do. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of my friends love it. And I feel like it's, although it's very girly, like, both male and females love the wine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel like the wine also fits with the idea, like your whole branding. Like I can imagine oh you're just like getting ready for like a yes. girl's night, just like sipping the wine. Mm -hmm. I also got into wine in quarantine because I like, my wine before was like really like, you know how it's like 2% juice. Like yes. that's all I could drink before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's still good. Don't get me wrong. But in quarantine, I was like drinking vodka by myself and I was like, girl, this might be a problem. <laughs> so I started getting into wine. I tried like Whispering Angel, like the rosés mm -hmm. and I kind of like dip my toes in the water. I'd get drunk. We'd play like Jackbox together while yeah. she was home. It was so fun. And I mm -hmm. feel like now I'm a wine connoisseur. Yeah, me too, which is why I'm so, but I love to come out with liquor down the road. Yes. Maybe when I'm a little bit older, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We could do a collab or something. Would <gasps> lit. Well, I mean, you are a queen at branding things. <laughs> when it's your birthday, like the world knows. Oh my you know God, I mean? yes, <laughs> yes. Like I live, uh, I live for all of the photo shoots. The martini and the glass. Shoots. Was oh, that what that it was, was, the martini like, glass? Iconic. That was iconic. Like, yeah, I just used to feel like back then, like, photo shoots would have to be like oh for a brand or a campaign but then one day I'm like why don't I just do it for myself yeah Good I feel for like you. over time we just start doing shoots or whatever just for ourselves yeah or headshots. so for my birthday I make it a very big deal oh so no for my birth month I feel like we all do oh I'm a big birth month oh, yeah. February mm -hmm. is Remy yes <laughs> but it's 20 it's shorter <laughs> so I'm allowed to it's okay <laughs> But you're really into astrology from what I heard. I love astrology. I really do. Yeah, I have a couple crystals in my bag somewhere. <gasps> what do you have? I have tiger's eye. It's like a protective stone. Ooh. I have amethyst. And I'm sure you guys know carnelian is a very popular stone right now. I know nothing. What? <laughs> She's, she doesn't really like to talk about crystals very Sometimes much. they freak me out. But, you know, really? I don't know much about mm -hmm. all of it. Um, I do know I'm an Aries with a rising and... <gasps> 
Moon Libra. Yes. Wait. Oh, both of them? Yes. Oh my God, no way. And you're a Libra. Yeah. Okay, so what does that mean about, like, are we, so we like each other? To you're, each other? So like your sun <laughs> sign, you're an Aries, but your rising is Libra. So when people first meet you, you come off as a Libra. So very, like, oh. calm, chill. You oh. also like to Ooh. see perspective on both sides. Oh my God, a thousand percent. Oh. Yeah, you don't, you like to, like, not pick sides. You're just not a drama person. You'd rather have peace. Is the Libra <laughs> little picture? It's like a little um, a scale. Balance. Yeah, balance that makes and everything. Sense. I always need balance in my life. Yes, and then your moon is how you feel. So okay. my moon is in Cancer, so I'm very emotional, cry baby. Okay. Mm. Yeah. What's your rising? I'm a rising Leo, oh. moon Taurus. Okay. Yes. So yeah, you're very confident. You like attention. I, I love, love, I love the attention. attention. I love the I lights. Love, I love attention too. <laughs> What's your moon in? Taurus. Okay. And then I'm a Sun Aquarius. Are you very, like, nurturing, would you say? Um, everyone's percent. nodding their head right now. <laughs> She's like Mother Rem. She's literally like Mother Rem. I would Aww. say so, a little bit. Are you into Enneagrams as well? Into what? Enneagrams? What is that? Personality her, test? Let her That's go. my shit. I feel like she's no. a three. Thousand percent. I would say it too. Thousand, thousand percent. I'm also a three. Oh my God. I love learning new things. So what is that? Just like. Basically a- like they're the, like the hardest worker, overachiever, performer also. Enneagram is like a personality test. So okay. basically you, there's numbers one through nine and each one has a different, like whole bunch of characteristics and stuff. And a lot of um, writers for shows actually use it to help cast and make characters oh. because it can easily like figure out different characteristic traits and stuff. So um, Remy's a two, which is like basically the helper. That's the kind of name dub for a two. A lot of moms are even classified as twos because mm-hmm. they're very nurturing. They care about other people's feelings. They get their main validation from feeling love from others and like relationships and stuff. Wow. And then I'm a three, it's which is crazy. the overachiever. So we really care about like working, working, working. <laughs> um, also low key, like care about how you're perceived by others. You're mm-hmm. also really good reading a room and being able to like adapt to different people. But obviously being like an overachiever, like work is the main thing kind of like driving you and stuff wow but as, as you're saying that you're like tools are very nurturing so in my mind i'm like okay cancer and taurus go in that place mm-hmm. literally and i'm like sure all really really similar yeah, right? what would i be i feel like she would be a three okay I, I, maybe i, I think you could be a three no wing more. two you can like have a, a wing I, yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. a little cusp moment um, <laughs> our, um, our aries and aquarius like really good together because we saw this tiktok that said great business partners are aries and aquarius and ev- i believe everything that's on tiktok so. i definitely think like friendship business way yes i don't really think relationship wise oh that's good that's good be. no okay. that's not good i'm dating an airy no. oh <laughs> i mean honestly though people are like oh your sun sign is you actually have in a relationship it's better to look at moon signs because if your emotions are not compatible you guys oh, are wow. never gonna work out together. interesting how long have you been into astrology and all of that i think since Horoscope. high school the end I of just, the 17 magazines where you just like <laughs> read it that was yeah like, and i oh my god I, read about a, I read a bunch of books with having to do with astrology and just a lot of my friends come to me. They're like, I'm talking to an Aquarius. Are we compatible? And I'm like, no, stay away. <laughs> run. I'm like, run. Run. <laughs> yeah, but I love astrology. It's kind of like my little hobby. And then now I just recently got into like meditating and crystals and all that stuff. So that's like my passion right now. You seem so chill that. and collected. So but I'm honestly very crazy. Oh. I feel like you can like turn it on though. I feel yeah. like you know how to be cool. And I feel calm. like you're like these little wine bottles where it's like cute but then like it can you know <laughs> okay. mess you up. Too many. <laughs> <laughs> like don't don't test I'm it like, you know. I'm, I'm really like a scale. I'm like either super chill and calm and collector. I'm like super crazy. There's like no in between. You know who else is a Libra is Kim Kardashian. Is she really? Yeah. yeah. And she She's also a rising Satch like you're a rising oh Sag. God, a rising Sag, Sag scare me. We're just very out there, See, outgoing, I really, I'm trying to adventurous. <laughs> I love freedom, and I just like doing what I want. They're always just like gone. Yeah. Can't keep up. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Can we talk about you know your dating life? Has how's it been when you're trying to date and then there's a guy and you're like, what's your sign? And he you said you dated a, a Scorpio and a no, I dated Virgo? a Virgo. My longest relationship was with a Virgo, surprisingly, but I feel like because I'm on the cusp, maybe. Okay. I don't know, but. My longest relationship was with a Virgo. Dated a Cancer that was mm. did not last long. Okay, to mm. say the least. So if you're a Cancer and you're wanting to date Daisy, <laughs> sorry, just sorry, <laughs> sorry, I can't do Cancers. Love you guys. I also dated an Aquarius. Not for me. Yeah, yeah. I no. would. I yeah. could see that. Okay. <laughs> I really can. And my very last one was a Leo. And it was just, they kind of all sound bad when you put it like that. You know no, what I mean? It's just you know, like they didn't work out. I'm like. Kinda someone talking about Gemini, not really. Oh.
and that we're one very too. compatible. Okay. Libras and Geminis are very compatible. But my love life right now, non existent. <laughs> Say the least. Same. Okay, I'm not the only one who has been loving contact-free paying. I don't know about you guys, when I'm at the store or shopping and I'm wearing a backpack or something and I know my wallet is somewhere in there deep in the dark abyss of my purse or my backpack, sometimes it's just so much easier to pay when you already have your phone in your hand. Well, exciting news for you guys. PayPal QR code payments are now accepted at CVS stores nationwide, so it's super easy to make touch-free payments with your phone. Oh, also, did I mention that you get $10 cash back on your first purchase of $20 or more? It's literally so convenient and easy to use, especially because it can store all of your information. And for some reason, if you were to buy something and it never comes or whatever, you can actually put a claim. And anytime I've had to do that, PayPal is so amazing and they handle it so smooth. It's literally so nice having them in the middle. And obviously, if you're picking something up at CVS, it's so easy. And especially now that you can just use a QR code, it's literally just a few taps and then you're done. Literally so freaking easy. And again, who doesn't love getting a $10 cash back on your first purchase of $20 or more? So to get that $10 cash back on your first transaction of $20 or more, just head to your local CVS and pay using your PayPal or Venmo app. That's $10 cash back on your first purchase of $20 or more with the PayPal or Venmo app. To see terms and learn more about how to earn $10 cash back, go to paypal.com slash basic. Okay, as you guys know, making content is an essential part of what we do. And, you know, sometimes it can get a little bit hard, a little bit overwhelming when we've got so many moving pieces and everything together. As you guys know, Canva Pro has literally changed my life. I am absolutely obsessed with it. I use it for everything, for cooking with Remy. I use it to make recipes. I use it to make packing lists. I use it to organize pretty much everything. And you guys know how much I love organizing. So it is perfect for me. In case you guys don't know what Canva Pro is, it's a design platform that empowers you to create and share stunning content in just a few clicks. Whether you're a design professional or just getting started, designing with Canva Pro is amazingly fast, so fun. There are so many cute templates on there that you can use for literally anything that you're creating. There's thousands of professionally made templates that are easy to customize with simple drag and drop features, or you can start from scratch, of course, if you'd like. Canva Pro comes with endless premium fonts, photos, videos, and so much more that add personality to your projects. There's also an extensive library of tools. There's so many different options to use and fun little like gifts and things like that. And with Canva Pro's content planner, you'll save time planning, creating, and posting social media content too, which is obviously amazing and especially great for us when we're doing it for a living. It's great because you can pause scheduled posts and edit them at any time. Design like a pro with Canva Pro. Right now, you can get a free 45-day extended trial when you use our promo code. Just go to canva.me basic to get your free 45-day extended trial. That's C-A-N-V-A dot M-E slash basic, canva.me slash basic. You've had like a lot of public relationships, correct? Or a I few had public relationships? Two. Okay. Like, yeah. So I used to have uh, actually a channel with my ex boyfriend, <gasps> and we would vlog. I had no idea. I didn't you know had a this. Channel. I didn't know this. Deleted everything. Wait. Okay. Oh, my Did it God. just start I'm as a couple's passionate. channel? So I had my main channel, and then okay. me and my ex, we were high school sweet. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are so She couples. lives for this shit. I'm very true, so I'm very excited to tell the story. Okay, okay, yeah. So we were high school sweethearts, and oh, no. I got signed to this TV network, and I told him, like, hey, like, I'm moving. Do you want to move with me to California? So he literally dropped everything and moved with mm, me. The resentment's already starting to build. Yes, and so <laughs> we moved together, and I used You're to live God, in... Don't hold back. No, I, no it's done. It's not like you're <laughs> I actually used to live in Whittier. I first shut the fuck up. Yeah. Oh my god. You know Wait, what I always heard? Here? Yeah. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I lived in La Habra. No way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. I had no idea. But yeah, I lived in Whittier where all the girls are prettier. I was just gonna say <laughs> that's what I was heard. Whittier where all the girls are prettier. Yeah, I said I, that to you the other day. <laughs> I lived in Whittier for a year and I lived there with him. How and old were you? Nineteen. Oh. I was nineteen. Yeah, I, I waited to turn nineteen to move here. Okay. okay. Yeah. So it was just me and him moved here with like a couple thousand dollars and I was like, Am I gonna make it or no? I was like, oh, I'm just I gonna work that. my ass off. And you were signed to a TV network? I was. I was signed to Univision for okay. a year. Ah. Yeah, and that's where I met Sam. <gasps> yeah, Lovely. so he actually managed me, and then we both like kind of left, and then now we're the Matter Media Group. You know, so. <laughs> I don't know why. Just, I just a like, whisper plug. I know. Sorry, <laughs> you guys don't get the full plug. <laughs> I think my voice kind of went away. I think it was like a line or something. I was like, why did it come out like that? I was like, Matter Media Group. <laughs> but once I did my channel, a lot of people were. Once I started doing like videos with him, they blew up, and people loved us together. So I was like, you know what? Let's do a couples channel. And oh, no. which especially around then, I mean, I'm not sure Back- exactly how many years ago, but couples channels were Pop you it. would make literally like a million dollars. Like it and was 
a mate like yeah. who was a big couples channel at the time would you say even like family channels like shade hearts were huge oh. uh, yeah, like I everyone i don't remember specifically who jen what what was her name it was like this prank channel couple i forgot what oh the, prank versus prank yes yes oh yes. yeah they, they were, were like huge at oh the my time. god yes yeah. but we started a couple's channel and we would vlog like every other day everything and then that kind of just you know people started to feel entitled to know everything. Yeah. So. I can't, like, those bound... And it's, what's hard is when you're vulnerable and you show the sides of you guys having a disagreement or, like, you know, a really intimate moment, whatever, and then people feel like they're entitled to say something or know they know everything about your yes. relationship. Mm -hmm. But obviously that's toxic because you don't need strangers who really don't know anything. But then that's what makes it special. And it's just... I can't imagine. It's just a very, like, complex yeah. just situation. How and long did you have that channel? I would say like um, I think over a year. We All were right. at like half a million before we broke up. Wow! Did you stay together longer say, yeah. because you didn't want to end the chance? Like, was it harder no, to break we, up? Me and him never ever ever cared about Good. the followers of the cloud. We just kind of did it for fun. Good. Wow. But it was just until like we would we broke up. I think like twice, and then we would get back together. And mm. then, but the very last time was when it was like very very toxic. It just kind of like people didn't really see it. So. Mm -hmm. We just broke up and then I did a video being like, hey guys, like we're going our separate ways, you know, like he moved back to Texas. I'm still here. I'm just going to focus on my career. For some reason, everybody blamed me for it. Yeah. I don't know why women get blamed for like a breakup or stuff. Like it's very know. just, you know. It's so interesting to see. I don't know, but mm -hmm. I became like a punching bag. Wow. And he wasn't getting any hate. And I was like, hey, like if you don't defend my name, I'm going to tell them the real reason why we broke up. And <gasps> T, but was the real um, he was like, okay, like, I'm sorry, like, blah, blah. And then he went and, like, you know, like, was like, hey, you guys need to stop sending hate to Daisy, blah, blah. And I was like, thank you. And up to this day, I, I don't see the point of putting, like, our personal business, yeah. whatever happened, you know? It's still a mystery to the public. But after that, um, I was just like, I don't want to look back at that channel and have, I just archived, archived all yeah. the videos on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I have, like, five now. But yeah, that, wow. after that relationship, I became a little bit scarred with, like, yeah. Putting anything public? I was gonna say it makes you take a few steps back and start appreciating privacy a little yes. bit more. Mm -hmm. I you know? definitely became more private and a lot of my mm -hmm. fans noticed that too. Like they'll ask like new fans will be like, Oh, I didn't know about this and they're like, You don't she became very private with her mm -hmm. life and I don't know. I, I think it's just more to protect my exactly energy and just emotions. I used to, I did get very depressed after the yeah. breakup, and then when it's on social media, it's like even worse. Well, especially oh, when yeah. you see a comment that is low key right, <laughs> and you're yeah. like, and I'm like, mm. but like it hurts so bad <laughs> I can't when read. it's right, yeah. or you know, someone says something. I don't know. So wow, I had no idea you guys had a couple channels. Yeah, so it was like, I think. Would you ever have ago. another one again? No, I don't see myself. Would you be a mommy vlogger ever? <gasps> yes. Okay, yeah, mommy would, vloggers. I would okay, love okay. To be a mommy vlogger. I love mommy. I would vlogs. live for your mom vlogs. I want to. Oh be my a mommy god! Right now, but I would need a boyfriend first. So. <laughs> That's not gonna happen anytime soon. <laughs> oh my gosh! So when you were, I feel like what I've learned with having a relationship somewhat public, it's like once you say something, you can't take it back. Mm -hmm. Or also, people just from watching the twenty-minute vlogs of you know, how many days put together, they start to form an opinion of what they think the narrative of your life is. Mm -hmm. And it's so hard to kind of change that narrative once they already have their thoughts. And it's it's like one of those things where you remind yourself, you're like, I can't change someone's opinions. It doesn't matter what I say, but it still like sits with you. You're like, but I just want to say this. Or I want to say that. I want to like yeah. get them. I feel like that's why I became so depressed because I felt the need to explain myself and yeah. just to prove myself. And then it kind of just, I it, fucked me up mentally because yeah. mm -hmm. I was constantly trying to please others except myself yeah and I kind of just drowned in my own thoughts and everything but now I've just learned to just not care about what people have to say I only have one life and I'm okay but how do we get there I was just <laughs> do you read comments it's on anything bad. I do and I'm I kid you not I'm just so at peace in my life now mm. because especially because wow. I moved to Texas like I was just not doing good here I yeah. really wasn't I have no, I had no family here. I still have no family. I have like one aunt, but she's like an hour away. Mm -hmm. And definitely like after me and my ex broke up and now I was here alone, I was very scared. And then from Whittier, I was like, I just had too many memories there with him. Yeah. So I just straight moved to Hollywood. Oh my God. And being, oh, that's a big change. Single, independent. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, started partying and meeting all these people. And I did get sucked into the LA scene. And it's very hard. Yeah. Because it's fun. You yeah. Get me? And a lot of my fans didn't like that change. Yeah. And I was turning different. And I was. Mm. And that's always hard when your fans mm -hmm. who have given you the platform that, you know, we all have 
you know feel like you've changed and obviously change isn't bad like change Mm -hmm. is good and evolving but then at the same time you do like they feel yeah they feel like they can say hey you're different change like a family member Mm -hmm. or friend would come to someone saying hey you've changed for the worse or better or whatever Mm -hmm. and I think giving people that power is very hard because you're trying to just be your own person but then at the same time you do want to respect the fact that you are here because of them and Mm -hmm. I think that's that hard line that we all struggle with so much yeah. I was in denial when I was like changing yeah I was in denial. I was like no I'm still the same Daisy like what are you guys talking about mm-hmm. but it took time for me to realize like oh my god they were so right mm-hmm. because they had been watching me since the very beginning yeah and I was just so lost so based on my research in 2016 you began your beauty career yeah correct yes, yes. how has your time been in the beauty community it has definitely been a roller coaster. I feel like when first the beauty community came out, it was all about makeup. Mm-hmm. Get ready with me. See, we tried to be a part of it, but we quickly yes, realized we too we're, not. we're pioneers we in the were, beauty yeah, community. We were, okay. we were part of it in the beginning. 2016. Her face right now. <laughs> she goes, oh, really? I'm looking at your makeup right now. <laughs> no, this is not look good. No. I tried. I remember makeup on Instagram was very big, mm-hmm. but when it was already kind of saturated so i was like how am i going to stand out so i decided to post my makeup on twitter really and makeup twitter wasn't a thing no so i posted this glitter cut crease and i fell asleep woke up and it went viral shut really? up and then after that like i started posting nothing but makeup and i was getting thousands and thousands of retweets and follows and like i just started blowing up on twitter and i was like okay and then people were like do youtube do youtube and i was like no i don't think i would ever do youtube because i was still in high school and i was like you know, in a small town in Texas, Oak Cliff, I was just like, I just would feel weird. Yeah. And I was like, fuck it, I'm just going to do it. And then I decided to go ahead and do YouTube. And then I still just kept posting my makeup mostly on Twitter. I remember James Charles. He kind of started this little group. He basically like got like all the like pop in makeup people on Twitter into like one group chat. So he was a popular makeup person on Twitter too? When he jumped on Twitter and he saw that there was already like the top, like I wouldn't say the top makeup people, but there was already kind of like a little group forming in a way. He decided to just rally up everybody that was like really just consistent with makeup Twitter and fans loved. So it was like me, it was um, Thomas, James. Oh, actually it was just, he was the only guy in the in the group chat at first. Oh. So it was only James, me, Shelby, Tina, Sky, Taylor. There was just like, a, it was like big group chat. Oh my God. And then we were on Omegle. I remember my first time talking to oh James my was God. on Omegle. And oh then, my goodness. <laughs> yes, it was like super, it was like so brand new. He still wasn't really big on anything. I wasn't big on anything either. And then we went to like Generation Beauty and all Gen- this stuff. Right. Oh my yes. god! We went there together, and we were all like, so we went to, uh, we took like this picture of all of us applying our highlighter. And it, like, oh my god! Like, oh my god! We're so cool. But it was called, <laughs> it was called the Real Housewives of Anastasia Beverly Hills. That's oh. iconic. Right. Yes, and then on Twitter, we would be like, oh my god, R H O A B H. And looking back at it now, I'm like, I don't want to talk about that phase. I'm but, dead. Yeah, and then we added another boy, but then. I don't know. Some at some point things just started getting really tense and yeah. people started competing with other people. Yeah. And then everybody just kind of went their separate ways. Mm-hmm. You know, James blew up. I did my thing. Everybody did their own thing. And now I don't really have contact with a bunch of James is probably the only person that I kind of I've seen frequently because we have a mutual friend Laura. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love Laura. I mean, Laura's the best. I'm obsessed so, with um, Laura's boutique. Check it out. Yeah. She got invited me to her boutique and James got invited to Two Face and I was like, well, he was like, if you invite me to Laura's, I'll invite you to Two Face like as a plus one. Oh. So then I brought him to Laura and that's how he met Laura and then he took me to the Two Face headquarters and we kind of just did like a little exchange. Oh, oh my god, that's, that's so crazy. sweet. Yeah, and this is like in the very beginning and then he blew up and he's doing his thing and then now I'm doing my thing and then we see each other at like gatherings and like events and stuff like that it's very well known in the beauty community i feel like maybe it's just because there's so many big personalities Mm -hmm. all together that it everybody's fighting there's a lot of drama as i'm sure everybody knows i was gonna say also i think with beauty specifically because we're more lifestyle it's so based on who we are and our personalities but the end all be all for most um makeup artists or beauty the beauty community is to have a cosmetics line so i could see how it feels more as if there's more competition because it's like well who's gonna be in Sephora first or who's gonna be in like like it, it yeah i could see that being a huge part of it too because if someone comes out with a makeup palette and someone else then comes out with a makeup palette, especially a few years ago, it was like, oh my God, you copied me. I came out with a makeup palette. Yeah. But 
in reality, it's so it's you know now that's not really much of a thing anymore. I think you've done a great job kind of staying out of. A yeah, lot of I drama. don't really have scandals in the makeup community. I don't really have drama with anybody. Like I've had dirt thrown on my name by other influencers, but I never entertained it. Mm. I just really don't give a fuck if you don't like me. That's just how it goes. Oh my God. But um, I feel like at first it was all about the makeup and who did the better makeup. But then people once you know the our followers and audience grew with the makeup community everybody knows how to do makeup now they're focused on your personality yeah now they're focused focus on your love life on mm. what you're doing who you're hanging out with so then it kind of literally became a competition and it wasn't like that in the beginning which no, sucks yeah but the more it became a competition and and it was all about status and who has more money and who has the best car and it yeah. sort of became that i just kind of took a step back i love that though and i just I, I although I was in the beauty community, I would still just watch from the outside mm-hmm. because I just I don't like to entertain dom- drama at all. Yeah. But as soon as you get big, it's like you have money now to start your own brand. And I have a bunch of friends that have their own brands, and I love all of them equally. But it does become very like competitive. Yeah. I mean, how can it not? I think yeah. that's what's really hard. And even though you want to be supportive of everyone, I can only feel how I don't know. I can only un- I, I don't know. I feel like I see it from the outside, so yeah. I totally can see that. I feel like the makeup community is still very alive. It's just not the same. I will. Well, say. it has to be so different. You know, for instance, posting a tutorial how it used to be you just post a smoky eye and now you know feeling like you have to give so much of yourself and you wanting to be more Mm -hmm. reserved and not wanting to give every single detail like I I can only imagine you needing to kind of have that step back from it yeah I feel like I mean now if you post like back then I posted a cut crease double reverse ombre mm-hmm. whatever that would get so many views yeah it's like it was new but now it's like you post and it's like everybody kind of knows how to do makeup now yeah everybody like kinda every tutorial is out yeah. there so then now it's kind of like people are more interested in what you're doing with your life so it's yeah. like yeah with my youtube it's like you can go all the way back and you'll find all my tutorials but it's like now like that's not really in and that's yeah. not gonna get and i know it's not all about the views but it's like i also grew like as the years went by I grew with makeup like back then I was super into colorful and glitter Mm -hmm. and this and that and now I'm more into like soft glam natural makeup you know and people don't like that but I'm like I as as makeup trends change I also change with my makeup yeah like now on YouTube I back then I used to post everything that my fans wanted but now I just post what makes me happy what makes me comfortable and that's what I ended up learning throughout my journey is that you can't please everyone yeah so I'm just gonna post whatever makes me happy what's one of your favorite videos you've posted Hmm. I would probably say my very first one. <gasps> really? I, I would say my very first video. I, I just, it was a prom tutorial. Oh my God. Oh, it was a prom, like a glitter cut crease. And I, I actually used to freelance and makeup. That's how I made my money. Really? I used no to way. do people's makeup. What for do you like ha- proms and events and things? Yeah. Ah. I was going to say, what advice do you have for someone who is a freelancer right now who wants to get in the YouTube world? Just do it. A okay. lot of people that I would end up doing their makeup, they're like, how did you start on, on YouTube, whatever? Yeah. And I'm like, you literally just have to do it. Like, you're not going to, like, it's not like it's going to backfire on you, whatever. Like, just do it. If you're, And if your passion would be consistent, mm-hmm. like, and if your passion is for makeup, then just do it. And then, like, eventually you're going to get results, whether it's becoming a freelance global artist or yeah. whether it's becoming a makeup artist for a celebrity. Like, you just never know. So mm-hmm. it doesn't hurt to try. So I would definitely just say just go for it. Like, literally, the sky is your limit, and you oh, just I love never that. know. Yeah. You said when you started on Twitter, people were saying to post on YouTube, and you said no. So when did you actually make that transition over? I think it was, yeah, my first video was in 2016. So okay. There, I started actually getting into makeup my senior year. was because I was in a drill team. And we were, oh. That's right. I was in drill team, so we would have to do, and literally, our makeup would have to be red lipstick and brown eyeshadow. Mm-hmm. And I sucked at it so well. <laughs> <laughs> and, and at one point, since... Uh, I was really smart in school and I was taking extra college classes and stuff because I was very passionate about college. I wanted to do forensic psychology. Wow. Oh my God. Now I wanted to study the brains of like serial killers and stuff. That's like my thing. Interesting. Yeah. And so I really worked my ass off to go to college and I got accepted to the college of my dreams. But unfortunately with my immigration status they were like we're gonna charge as an international student and i was broke as fuck oh my god i was gosh. like there is no way i'm gonna be able to afford that my yeah. mom's like i'll get another job i mean blah, it's blah. like three times the normal tuition yes right? and so i was like oh my god so i became very depressed so and when i was depressed oh. my like outlet was makeup oh so then god. i started doing makeup i started practicing on myself and i was just super happy doing makeup and then that's whenever i posted on twitter and then kind of just i was like you know what 
I'm not going to college. What else do I have to lose? Like, let me just go ahead and do YouTube. And then literally everything just kind of blew up. That's, That's so stunning. incredible. Yeah. My God. Mm-hmm. And you said a lot of your friends have brands and you get to see from like the outsider's perspective what that's like. Mm-hmm. What are some of your big future plans and goals within the makeup community? Within the makeup community, I feel like just, I guess just still being a part of it. Mm-hmm. Because I I mean, although I am, I feel like I've been able to just be Daisy Marquez as a brand. Mm-hmm. Because back then people would just be like, oh, she's a makeup artist. But now it's like I'm known as Daisy Marquez. But I still love makeup. I still love yeah. sharing what's in, what's not, my favorite products. And I feel like I want to grow old with the makeup community because yeah. that's where I started. Yeah, I love makeup. I'm always going to love makeup. Although I don't have the same content as I used to, I still want to be like, the fucking 80 year old doing fucking movies. I love that <laughs> that would be so I glitter cool. cut crease yeah like I don't know I, I love makeup and although I don't like post YouTube videos as much as I do now it's still my passion I still love makeup oh my god of course yeah I think it's interesting to see that tutorials aren't really as big of a thing anymore like mm-hmm. a, like you said everything's kind of been done but I still love watching people doing their makeup and just talking about whatever mm-hmm. it may be under the sun just to like get to know the person you know what's crazy I remember I would watch all the Black Friday hauls uh, <laughs> all the t- I would look forward to them and I because I would watch you before I was on YouTube I would watch you guys oh no way yeah, I was like in you're middle school so and them. stuff and I would I watch you guys yeah so it's crazy to be here now you're like one of those girls that come up to us and they're like we watch your videos and we're like why you watch our videos <laughs> why yeah I watched all of you guys and whenever you guys would do collabs I'd be like oh my god they're all collabing oh my god <laughs> yeah oh my god that's insane that was like an era I was it gonna say really who were was. some of your favorite YouTubers Bethany Milta was like always. I fucking love that bitch. Icon she's queen. She's the sweetest I fucking love that bitch. She really paved the way for all of us. She really yeah. thanks Beth. Love you. But all of you guys really. And then whenever I just it's so refreshing when I started seeing you guys doing like drunk Q and A. Oh my god. Spilling the tea. I'm like yes. You're like finally. This is what I was waiting for. Because now we're all older. You get. I feel yes. like our audience grew with us. Yes. Yes. So it's very refreshing to just see all of us grow up together and then our content grow with us. Yeah. I mean, we felt like we had to hide our adult selves mm-hmm. for a long time. I yeah. feel like because people had grown up with us and they, just like we said about the relationship thing, it's like they, they form this narrative mm-hmm. of who you are. And mm-hmm. I feel like we felt the same way in making content like also – young content for younger people for so long that you would imagine we just dropped like a truth or drink where we were just like getting blacked out and like saying all this crazy stuff like people would have been like what is going on yeah you kind of had to ease into it yes did you feel that too yes i remember Ah. the first time i posted a picture of me flicking like doing the middle finger after a beauty con i was like i get nervous (laughs) i know i got but i remember i remember it was kind of liberating because i was like i just don't care i'm like you know what like it was like i had to put like a mask on when it mm-hmm. was like I was in front of the camera I had to be very cordial and mm-hmm. proper yeah but then outside of it, it's like I was already like growing up and like I was yeah. drinking with my friends and going out I just wouldn't post it yeah and I was Same. so scared to get judged yes but I'm like wait kids my age are well people my age are doing this yes. so I'm like why can't I do it and I was yes. I feel like I started when I was a teenager mm-hmm. so I was just like I was like why it's, can I post a video me taking yes. a shot if they're taking a shot I feel like also especially illegal. going from the underage to you know, being over 21 when it comes to like drinking, that's a weird dynamic for people. Cause whether if you started at 22, people would be like, Oh, she's older. It's fine. But well, because you got into it a little older too, right? Well, yeah. I mean, I started when I was 16. Oh, I meant drinking. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm confused. <laughs> I mean, you got into like the party scene a little bit later. In yeah. Your life. I'm just saying anyways, <laughs> oh my God. we're late bloomers. We're also tipsy. On that note. <laughs> so you mentioned earlier how you are a part of DACA. Mm-hmm. Can you just explain to the audience? I feel like not everybody knows a lot about it. Yeah. So basically DACA, it gave me a social security number. If you have DACA, you're, well, if you're an immigrant, you can't work here and you can't go to college. So with DACA, I was able to work, go to college and get a social security number. I'm able to get an ID, a driver's license. So that really has just been like a huge part of my life and you do have to renew it right now i know that like there's like a pause on it so anybody new trying to get on it they can't Mm. if you already like have been a part of the program then you're safe but it just sucks like it's it's just it's been a it's like every time i feel like with us streamers and DACA recipients like we take a step forward and then step back it's just it's been just a roller coaster and it's very overwhelming too because you're 
you're like safe, but then you're not safe. Yeah. I'm sure I never feel stable. In that yeah. Time period that like it, when it expires, I start freaking out yeah. and I get so much anxiety and I'm like running like I'm trying to get everything fixed because oh my in gosh. that time like your life can change yeah and then with daca like you just have to be like good in school and you can't get in trouble with the law or anything so like it's like a constant my, anxiety yeah it's yeah. a lot of anxiety and then like i just after i went to mexico the very last time i was just like a little bit traumatized i was like i'm just gonna stay here for yeah now and just you know but yeah i've been waiting for mm, i said like over five years to get my citizenship wow but i've been here since i was 11 months wow oh my gosh i've been in the united states since i was 11 months so like this is i know like this is like my home so like whenever i went to go visit over there it was like so new to me so like it's just it's a whole different world over there that i don't know i'm not familiar with it i just know that i have family there you know but (sighs) it's like i grew up here literally yeah Yeah. so it's like a whole i don't know it's just very complicated like at any time like you know like some people just marry other people for it, whatever. But it's mm-hmm. just like my citizen. I just hold it very close to my heart. Yeah, I'm sure. And I just rather wait to get it. And it's just, it's been, it's been a journey. But I'm still here. And I, you know, I just want to show people that have like DACA that you can still do it because I really felt like I was limited. Yeah. You know, especially living here and stuff. And I just want to be an example for those to be like, look, although you're limited to some point like you can still do it and you can still chase your dreams mm-hmm. and you can accomplish them if you really put your mind no to it. i feel like you're so inspiring to so many people and i'm sure that's why so many people are even watching you you Thank know you. just I, to support and I, I mean i i've heard of daca for so long but never really knew like the depth of it so mm-hmm. i feel like even just the awareness that it's getting more recently is so awesome and yeah i think it's so inspiring for people to realize you know you i don't i feel like you've inspired so many people who realize that they uh-huh. can do so much and live that dream you know yeah i was very scared when i first posted the video oh i can't imagine to kind of wrap everything up what is something you would tell your younger self i would tell my younger self to just live for myself because i feel like especially being like in social media and the spotlight you try to please everyone and just Mm -hmm. try to prove yourself that you are a good person or this and that or whatever and i feel like back then i just used to care so much about what people thought about me yeah it kind of drove me crazy because you do just want to be seen like in such a good light whatever but we're not perfect we're Mm -hmm. human beings we Mm -hmm. make mistakes but i did stress myself out a lot over what people thought about me and over the years as i was healing and growing and just really getting to understand who i was i was like why do you care about what people say like you have one life it's going to come to an end at some point. Like, mm-hmm. why not live it for you and just do what makes you happy? So if that means not stressing yourself out and trying to upload two videos a week, if that means just uploading one video a week, that's fine. Yeah. The world's not going to end. Like, it's okay. I used to just overwork myself and feel the need to post twice a week or do this or do that. Hey, if I'm not happy and I'm not mentally there, it's okay to take a break. It's okay yeah. to cry. It's okay to not you know post a whole week like it's just i now i'm at a point in my life where i just want peace and i want to just do what makes me happy and whoever's gonna come on the ride with me will come on the ride with me whoever doesn't it's fine you know like people that are real fans and just want to be with me on this journey they will stay you oh know? my god that was so, so inspiring ah, stop it. i'm gonna make that my alarm when i wake up in the morning i'm not even kidding i was like I, i'm gonna think about this when i go home well thank you so much for being on and being thank our first you. in-person guest I thank you girl thank you for so also getting much. drunk with us this was amazing i'm the honored one really, experience thank you do you Just, want to shout out all your socials and stuff so people can socials subscribe? on daisy marquez on everything and where Ooh. can they buy the wine because that's what they want shop daisy marquez.com <gasps> shop <laughs> anyways thank you guys so much for listening and watching pretty basic don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel so you can actually see the episodes and uh, see us be slightly tipsy off this one <laughs> anyways we love you guys so much and we will talk to you next week bye bye, bye.